Hi guys, I'm JM and this is the second instalment in the Lotus Diaries. Today I want to talk about the spec of the Evora 400. It doesn't sound like the most exciting of topics I know, but this is an area where Lotus differ quite significantly from a lot of their rivals. They give you an awful lot of stuff as standard with the car and all the really important performance features are included in the price. This is not like many of the cars from BMW or Porsche where to get that track time or to get that Nürburgring time or to get that 0-60 time that you have to specify another £5,000 worth of options. And you definitely don't have to specify another £10,000 worth of options to have a car that anyone else is going to want to buy again. So let's talk first through some of the stuff that comes as standard. Now every car gets the same superb aluminium bonded chassis tub and passive damper and spring setup with double wishbones front and rear. They also get the same 400 horsepower or 406 PS for you Europeans, 3.5 litre supercharged V6. The engine is a Toyota unit, best known as the engine out of the Camry, but it is only the core engine which is actually Toyota. The intake, the exhaust, the engine management and the supercharger installation are bespoke to Lotus. You have LED daylight running lights and xenon headlamps that actually work and are pretty damn good at night too. The car as standard comes with 19 inch front and 20 inch rear wheels. These are the forged wheels. The standard option is a cast wheel. The forged wheels are stronger and lighter. They're an option. Um, you can have them in silver or black. The standard wheels come in silver or black at no extra cost. Most of the cars that I've seen do have these forged wheels. Okay, so there's a choice of packs for the interior, which I'll go over in a moment, but all of them feature these brilliant Sparco seats. They are lighter than the Recaros used in the previous Evora, and they are very comfortable, very supportive. As standard, they are leather trimmed, and the other packs change other elements in the interior. You have this beautiful magnesium steering wheel, you also get an integrated sat-nav system. Okay, it's an Alpine aftermarket unit, but that means that when you feel the time to upgrade, you can replace it and half the car doesn't stop working because it's all wired in. Now, one thing I do feel I should point out is that the seats in this car, which are pretty distinctive, are not an option at all. Uh, I had these done by my supplying dealer, JCT600 in Leeds. Uh, I looked at the interior and decided that it wanted a, a little bit of a lift, and I suggested this to them, and they organised that for me. That being said, if you speak to Lotus Exclusive, I'm sure that they can do the uh, same thing for you. Just ask for the JM seats. You have an integrated rear diffuser which generates actual downforce. The car generates about a 32 kilograms of downforce at top speed. You have this large bore single central exit exhaust which is switchable and it makes an incredible noise. There'll be a video dedicated to just that later on. You have parking sensors and you have a reversing camera. I'm still on the standard features of the car. This is what you get for your base price. Okay, I have here the UK price list, which is correct as of February 2016. This is the list that you go through when you're specifying a new Evora 400. That is it. Anyone that's ever bought a German car will be shocked at the brevity of this list. Let me go through it with you. The base price of the Evora 400 is £72,000. That includes VAT and on-the-road costs. As standard, the car comes as a 2 plus 2 configuration. You can also have the car ordered as a 2 plus naught with the rear seats replaced with a luggage compartment. Most people won't do that because if you want to retrofit the seats afterwards, it's pretty much impossible. However, if you spec the car as a 2 plus 2, you can simply take the padding that's in there and chuck it away, store it in your garage or whatever, and that takes about two seconds and is very easy. So the options that you can specify for the car are as follows. You can have an automatic gearbox, that's £2,000. You can have the black pack. Now that is the black roof, you have the black side sills, and the black mirror caps. And the vast majority of cars that I've seen are ordered with this pack. On the interior packs there are two, leather or Alcantara. If you want your interior in a choice other than black, then you have to specify one of those. What they do is extend the material, be it leather or Alcantara, so that it's all over the dash, you get more on the doors, and it's just everywhere. It's a very nice interior. To be honest, even as standard, it's a very nice, bespoke, special feeling place to be. But if you want to just lift it a little bit, you can specify one of those packs. Again, most of the cars that I've seen have been specified with one or other of those packs. This car in particular has the black leather pack. You can identify the leather pack easily because it will have contrast stitching, whereas the standard pack doesn't. There are a range of paints available. If you want any colour at all, just tell Lotus. If it's not in their colour palette, if you can find the code for it, they will paint the car in that colour 
for an additional cost. There's a program called Lotus Exclusive, which is similar to things like Aston Martin Q, or to some extent the McLaren Special Operations Division, where basically speak to uh, Lotus and tell them what you want from your car and they will see if they can do it. Uh, I do suggest that you paint the car in as bright and colourful a colour as you can because that'll generate attention, people will go, oh, what's that? And the more people that do that will become aware of the Lotus brand, hopefully they'll sell some more, and they'll keep making lovely sports cars like these. To finish, you can have cruise control, that's £300, works perfectly well. You can have the brake calipers painted in either yellow or black, that's another £300. You then have a choice of forged wheels in either silver or black, that's £2,000. You can also delete either the aircon or the speakers if you're feeling particularly Chapman-esque and believe that you can do without them. Now the point I want to make here is that however you specify the 400, all of your essential creature comforts are going to be in the car and whatever you have is going to be a brilliant car. There's no such concept as a sort of must-have option. They're all going to be nice, they're all going to look like this. There's nothing that the car can't possibly be without, which is quite unusual if you're coming from a sort of German or lease car world where residuals mean everything. So I think it's quite refreshing, but it is something that you do need to get your head around when you're ordering. Um, and if you're looking for an endless uh, options list, you may be a little bit disappointed. For reference, I printed out the Porsche 911 options list for the just recently revised uh, 911 991.2. That was, in small text, 15 pages long and featured things like four different materials for the gear lever, you could have the car's key painted in the same colour as the car, you got various options for suspension, chassis, all these different things. There's three different levels of stereo, there's three different types of seat with two different configurations each. It goes on and on and on and on and on. Which is bad for the second hand buyer because it means finding the car in your ideal spec can be pretty difficult, whereas finding an Evora 400 in an ideal spec should be pretty easy because frankly there aren't that many combinations available. So that's it for specifying the car, hopefully that's explained things to those of you who haven't been able to see a proper options list yet and will give you some idea about what maybe you'd like your car to look like. Please join me soon for another video, I believe the next one will be on servicing costs, another exciting topic but an all important one if you're serious about purchasing. Goodbye as a lady in a WRX just sort of slowly burbled past and sort of stopped with a couple of kids in there and looking at the car and smiling and uh, I feel happy that those are going to be children to grow up and respect and appreciate the automobile. So those who say that today's generation is lost, there's still hope for some of them. Oh, okay, uh, the seats are... So as standard, you have...